everyone. Tonight on our program, it does not get any better for the Ghana CD. It is now the worst among the worst performing currencies in Africa. We'll find out the implications. We are going to cross end the year the CD at more than seven dollars. Sorry, seven CDs to one US dollars. Also coming up tonight, fuel prices is expected to cross the eight CD mark later this week, with petrol going up by almost twenty pesos a liter and diesel fourteen pesos. Plus, we'll tell you about a push by the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund to promote construction of green buildings in the country. To date, over the last four to five years, invested some two hundred and ninety million dollars. And we have about 12 projects under our portfolio, projects which include financing the new airport terminal 3. We are trying to make sure that Ghana's infrastructure improves. Thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Daryl Clark. Details after these. And as you just saw, uh, Brent crude selling at uh, over $100 a barrel will come to its impact on fuel prices. First, though, let's deal with the local currency because the city has been classified as the worst of African currencies with the worst spot returns tracked by Bloomberg. This follows a depreciation of 8.86% to the US dollar. Charles Yabwa looks at the continent's currencies with best spot returns and the worst. Here's more in this report. Among the currencies classified as having the worst spot returns, the Ghana city is ranked at the bottom, depreciating by almost 9% from 1st January to 25th February this year. It's followed by the Zambian Kwacha with a depreciation of 6.02%. These two economies have been battling with fiscal slippages, whilst their rising debt have created fears among investors regarding their economic outlook. Whereas Zambia agreed to an international monetary fund bailout of $1.4 billion in December last year for a crucial three-year program to restructure its debt, Ghana is adamant in returning to the Britain Wood Institution for a similar program to build investor credibility. Despite crude oil selling above $100 per barrel, the foreign inflows from the commodities have done little to help stabilize the city. However, the five-year $4.5 billion country partnership framework from the World Bank is expected to inject some dollars into the economy and help shore up the value of the city. Meanwhile, the Gambian Delasi, New Sudanese Pound and the Ethiopian Bear are among African countries with the worst spot returns by Bloomberg. Angolan Kwanzaa, Namibian Dollar and South African Rand are, however, among African countries with the best spot returns. Well, we'll get uh, some perspective to this uh, in the course of the bulletin, but let's turn to fuel prices because prices of petroleum products are expected to witness a significant increase at the pumps uh, beginning this Wednesday. Data secured from the bulk oil distribution companies uh, suggests prices will cross the 8 CD mark later this week with petrol going up by almost 20 pesos per liter and diesel 14 pesos. Here's George Raffi with more. Based on the data, petrol may witness the highest increase at the pumps from this Wednesday. A litre should be increased by 20 pesos, while diesel will go up by 14 pesos. Now, if we should work with the price codes of total oil at the last pricing window, then a litre of petrol should be selling at 8 Ghana cities, 18 pesos, while diesel will be going for 8 Ghana cities, 13 pesos. This is the lowest margin that the bulk oil distribution companies are expected to sell 
to the oil marketing firms starting from Tuesday, March 1. However, necessary adjustment to be done at the pumps from Wednesday. Industry sources say most of the oil marketing companies will be passing the full cost to consumers. This is due to challenges that most of them are going through in terms of recovering their cost of operations. The increment is as a result of rising crude prices on the international market. Some of the bulk oil distribution firms have told their business that this is the lowest band that they are working with. Therefore, there's a likelihood that some of the oil marketing firms may be selling higher than the price that will be given to them from this Tuesday. So uh, Brent crude currently trading at over $100 a barrel, and that means government is enjoying a windfall from its projection of um, around $60 for a barrel of oil in the 2022 budget. Executive Director of the Institute for Energy Security is joining calls for government to cushion consumers with revenue from the windfall. If you look at uh, Kenya and Egypt, they didn't only suspend the, the stabilization levy, but they went deep into the stabilization fund to cushion consumers. So it won't be enough to suspend uh, a levy or uh, take away a tax. But then we can look at the price stabilization and recovery fund to cushion consumers. And also, because uh, we are oil exporting country, um, we are getting a windfall from our crude oil sale. Exactly. From $61.23 per barrel projected, we are seeing oil price on the world market surge beyond $95. You see a clear windfall of profit for government. Maybe government want to use that to compensate consumers by removing or suspending, suspending some of the taxes. This is for the short term. But in the long term, we must be able to manage that forest exposure as well as international price exposure using the, the bus and tour system to bring consumers relief in the long term. Let's turn to other news for you tonight. The Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund says it has so far invested $290 million in 12 projects across seven sectors of the economy over the last four years. According to its chief executive, Suleiman Asamoah, government through the fund would seek to address the infrastructure deficit by creating a permanent capital investment vehicle. Speaking at a workshop organized on green building practices, he said his outfit will adopt climate-friendly policies. Government gave the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund seed funding of $325 million with a mandate to identify invest and manage investments in a diversified portfolio of infrastructure assets in the country for national development. Chief Executive Solomon Asamoah says the fund continues to invest in infrastructure across the country. We have to date, over the last four to five years, invested some $290 million and we have about 12 projects under our portfolio. Projects which include financing the new airport terminal 3, we are trying to make sure that Ghana's infrastructure improves and we're also trying to make sure that Ghanaian entrepreneurs and Ghanaian sponsors benefit from the investments that we do. We also need to make sure that all of our projects are climate friendly, are sustainable uh, and do not damage the environment. To continue to do what we've done over the last four or five years, which is identify new opportunities, new projects that needs to be done. For example, at the moment there's a a silent crisis going on in terms of university student accommodation. We are looking closely to make a major intervention in university student accommodation area. The Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund is collaborating with the International Finance Corporation and the World Bank Group on accelerating the adoption of green building practices through promotion of voluntary green building certification programs based on the EDGE software standard and certification system. Here's project lead for Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana, Dennis Kwanza. GIF now is going to ensure that all projects that they finance is going to be certified green. So if, if um, they are working with a developer, they are going to make sure the project is going to be green. And then we will come in to support that developer 
to uh, provide them with the necessary training, the necessary guidance to get the project to be certified green. And even after a certified green, um, we still work with that project to provide them with some uh, marketing support and then business development for the company itself. Because we would want to ensure that they get, apart from the direct monetary benefits they are getting, um, they should also um, get some indirect support from us. Meanwhile, Executive Secretary of the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, Samuel Amegaibo, says members of the association have not fully adopted green construction. Over here in Ghana, we haven't embraced it fully. There are several contributing factors to that, and especially with residential building development, which is where my people are. Uh, the problem has always been with cost. So I remember um, Energy Commission had a discussion with us some time ago to see how best residential properties can adopt uh, green. And it has always been the issue of cost because the analysis was that a, a typical residential building would need additional 10% of the unit cost to get into green. People are still looking out for other incentives that will make it more attractive for people to sign on. So for Ghana, it is cost. But if you look at the technology, it has a long-term benefit which people must appreciate. You're watching Business Live. Still to come, the city's woes are compounding. It's now not only the worst performing currency in Africa, it's now the worst among the worst performing currencies. We'll explain and find out the implications. We are going to cross end the year with the city at more than seven dollars, sorry, seven cities to one US dollars. Welcome back everyone and as we've been reporting tonight the Ghana city has been classified as the worst of African currencies with the worst spot returns tracked by Bloomberg. This follows a depreciation of 8.86% to the US dollar. Meanwhile, the executive director of the Center for Economics and Inequality Studies, Dr. Benjamin Amwa, says the current trend will cost the country more in terms of interest repayment on loans. He's however calling for Bank of Ghana's intervention to avert further worsening of the situation. Our credit rating on the market now will not make it possible 
for us to contract these loans at the previous rate that we had them. It's going to be expensive. Expensive means that we have to pay more by way of interest service, and that is what we are also trying to avoid currently. So we just have to hope and wait that the market will normalize a bit before we go onto the market to borrow. Speaking about hope, you know, you deal with the numbers. Looking at the crystal ball, where do you see the CD's performance in the medium to long term ending this year, considering what has happened in the very first two months of this year? Yeah, uh, for now, we have crossed the seven mark on the retail market. And if you look at the, the difference in the interbank rates and what the forex market is telling us, definitely we are going to cross end the year with the CD at more than seven dollars sorry seven cities to one us dollars again between now and december is such a long time that if you're able to get the injections from bog if you're able to get some support locally in terms of cleaning our books as a country from where we are sitting we believe that the speculative attack on the currency will be reduced a bit even though the city will depreciate it will not be as fast and as high as it has been in the past two months they are not going to see a slow pace. But as for the seven CDs to one dollar, we still believe that come the year end, a CD will be trading at that to the US dollar. Turning to the hospitality sector and the Institute of Hospitality at the Kumasi Technical University has called on government to invest more in the hospitality and tourism sector. According to President of the Institute, Matilda Asamoah Apia, the sector has played a role in boosting the nation's economy. There is more in this report. The Institute of Hospitality at the Kumasi Technical University is holding its 11th annual delegate conference on the theme, The Nexus Between Hospitality and National Development in the 21st Century. Speaking at the opening, President of the Institute, Matilda Asamoah Apia, noted investing in the sector will increase tourism flow and employment opportunities. She revealed the association is making efforts in bridging the gap between academia and industry. The government has to check and then help the technical vocational institutions and those training the hospitality students and the tourism students so that they will be able to stand on their feet when they go out. You see, we, we want to interlace the industry with the academia so that we can mix both the industry and the academia together and to push the economy of Ghana forward because when we train our students well and then they are being uh, good entrepreneurs on their own and then at the same time helping the industry I think the uh, pressure on the government will go down. Guest speaker Joseph Mensah Ansa appealed to employers in the hospitality and tourism industry to train their employees to add value to services. Employers believe that when they train people, they will run away or another person will push them. But the question I asked, if you don't train, then who will train for you to go and poach? Because we are all poaching. Okay, so it, employers should make it an effort to train their staff. And as I said, if they pay them well, they won't run away. They'll be loyal to them. After training, they will still stay. But if you don't train them, you go and poach. You poach a wrong material at a higher cost. The head of food technology department at KSTU, Professor Felis Naku Engma, advised players in the hospitality and tourism sector to introduce tourists to local dishes when they visit the country. He believes food has a role in promoting tourism in the country. I have had the occasion of introducing some of our local dishes to guests that we receive from outside of the country. And uh, surprisingly, or uh, uh, pleasantly, what, they, what happened was that they enjoyed it. And um, unfortunately, we think they may not like it. But elsewhere, if you travel and you go outside, it is what they have, it's what you are served with. In this, our case, it is the reverse. We would want to please them and then give them the food they are used to. But um, we need to introduce our own to them. A senior lecturer at the Department of Hotel, Catering and Institutional Management, KSTU, wants the government to provide more teaching equipment to the department. According to Dr. Patricia Wusudakun, this will help in training students in the hospitality sector. We have very few working equipment. So that when the students go out into industry, they don't even know some of the equipment. 
So they are really lost, although they have the head knowledge. They don't know what it is they have to work with. So I like to plead with policymakers, governments, a minister of tourism, and I mean all the players when it comes to hospitality education that let us resource and equip the last that train our students. I need to say what you guys report read to you. The African Centre for Energy Policy is urging students in the country's second cycle and tertiary institutions to show interest in how the country's petroleum and energy sector resources are expended. ATEP wants the students to spearhead the accountability of resources in petroleum, oil and energy sector in order to contribute to how the revenues are used. Addressing students at the Cape Coast Technical University Policy Lead, Petroleum and Conventional Energy at ASEP Kojo Yauche said they intend to empower more youth to be critical in Ghana's energy space. Richard Kujunyaku has more in the following report. I've done a lot of work around how petroleum resources are being expended, um, issues around ghost projects, um, the efficiency of spending where you go poorly constructed uh, 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 projects uh, where there is no value that is being delivered for the money that is uh, being spent. And a key missing link in all of this is actually active uh, citizenship where you have a lot of people engaged with the process that's kojo yaoche policy lead petroleum and conventional energy of asap he explains why there is the need for the organization to build a critical mass who are empowered through access to information on extractive resources and also to strengthen public debates on accountability mechanisms to ensure that they are able to monitor and police whatever is happening in the resource uh, sector uh, because if, if you don't if you don't have a critical mass of people who government will essentially respond to when they rise up and speak about some of these things the things will continue to fester and will not be getting value for the oil uh, revenues that we are we are getting as a country so essentially that's why we are here today to accept there is a key missing link in holding those entrusted with the management of our resources and that has led to assembling active citizen voices that would police and monitor the process mabel Akwe is the head monitoring evaluation and learning at asap it is our hope that through this session the that through this sessions participants will be well equipped with the innovative ways and how to effectively use available data to hold the privileged few to manage prudently our natural resources. At the end of the day, we hope that the vast, the vast numbers of the people here, their appetite will be drawn to be interested in resource governance. The student here at the Cape Coast Technical University would undergo training and also be equipped with the requisite skills and information in order to become part of the critical mass. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenya Akon, Cape Coast. And that's uh, our bulletin tonight. Let's show you what is trending on our website, myjoyonline.com. We've got the day's latest stories from over there. You can check it out, including our top stories. Bloomberg classifies city as West of West Spot returns of African currencies. Uh, you can read more about that. Also, prices of petroleum products to go up by about 6%. Those stories and others on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for watching our program tonight. We will be back same time tomorrow.